And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the sad things about being a reviewer is getting all these games, small little games in the mail, and so many times they're just really not that good. I know, I know, you're going, ah, <laughs> we feel so bad for you. Okay, well, once you get over your crying fit, the neat thing about that is, though, every once in a while you get a small game that really surprises you, and it's a lot of fun. Some of my favorite games are games that I got, and I just was amazed at how good they are. Now, I don't know if will ever become one of my favorite games, but it is a good one, and I'll tell you, I read the rules, and I thought, you know, that just doesn't really sound interesting, and I played it, and I still wasn't convinced until I played it a second time, and then suddenly I was hooked. It's actually a pretty clever little game. Let me show you. Everybody starts with the exact same four cards. You start with a mechanic card, who's basically in the deck as an annoyance to you. Uh, and then you start with three other cards, and these three cards have different characteristics. The most important characteristics, uh, up here in the upper corner, you see little lightning bolts, and when you're bidding in the course of the game, that's how much the how much, how much they are worth when you're bidding. So you can see this three is worth quite a bit. The number underneath that, the small little number two, one and two here, that's how many victory points they're worth at the end of the game. And then, down here in the bottom, each one also can work as a component of a larger machine. This one's a nut, this one is oil, this one can be a gear or a, a bolt. And so you have to uh, take that into account as you're playing the course of the game. But everyone gets these exact three cards. Then, the way the game is played is, the pile uh, is set here of the physic cards, and eight of them are placed in a row all the way over like this. Five, six, seven, eight. So, we have eight cards here. Then, at the beginning of the round, the first card is turned over. And you look at the conveyor belt number here. So you see this one here has a conveyor belt number of four. So that means the first four cards are turned over. Players are going to be auctioning off these cards one at a time. And this gives you kind of a chance to see what's coming up ahead. So let's say here's the first card that we're auctioning it off, and one of the players is chosen as a start player. They're given the box uh, with this spanner, although the, the game recommends that you get your own spanner uh, that gives it a start player. But everyone bids cards face down. They're all revealed, and whoever bids the most gets this card, and it's added to their discards. Every card that everybody bid is also added to their discards also. If there's a tie, the person with the spanner wins the tie, but then they must give this to the loser, or to the loser if they weren't involved in the tie. Either way, the loser gets the spanner, which means they'll win the next tie, which is a pretty neat thing. And so card after card is auctioned off, and then we turn over the next card. We look at the number, it says four again, so we make sure that there's four cards turned over. But some of these cards say one, and you, you can only see so far ahead, and we auction them off. At the end of each round, you'll shuffle your cards, and you'll draw six of them, to use in the next one. So when you buy cards over the course of the game, you are use, utilizing those cards to bid for future ones. Now that sounds like a very popular game, Dominion, but it really doesn't have a lot to do with Dominion. Now, one of the biggest points of the game, and this is a critical one, are getting production units. As, this is what a production unit card looks like. And this production unit means you need one bolt and one oil and you can put those together and get a machine, or a machine, which is worth six points. So, when you get this, you must put this card in front of you. And at some point during the game, you're going to put, need to put one of your cards underneath it to get it functioning, the machine. See here, this is a bolt card in the corner. So, I can put that one underneath this machine. At the end of the game, and the game ends out ends when there's no more cards from the deck to put out eight cards, I will look through my deck and I will allocate... Uh, each of my robots that I have to a machine. So let's say, for example, I have enough so that I can allocate two oil and two bolts so I can make two of these production units here for six points each. So that's 12 points, and that includes the production, uh, the victory points on the card. That doesn't include, I'm sorry, the victory points on the cards themselves. So I'm adding up those victory points plus any production units that I made with this. Now, you've got to be careful. These production units sound great, and they really are, and you can't win the game without them. But if you get a production unit and you can't form a unit for it, you're going to lose the number of points that it mentions on it. 
And so some of the production units are five and six points. There's one that's only three, but then there's a really big one here that's worth 13. But you see you need four different things to get this working. If you don't build at least one thing with this, you would lose 13 points. And so that's basically the game, using the cards to bid and to build different machines. There's even some visit cards, like this one here, which are worth a negative one point at the end of the game, but they are worth three in bidding. So are they worth getting and adding to your deck? That's up to you to decide. Fizzit takes a lot shorter time than you might think. It takes about 20 minutes to play a game, which isn't very long. But it's also the kind of game I think you're going to need to play twice. You play it the first time and you'll say, I really don't know what I'm doing. And then suddenly you say, oh, I should have bid on that piece because that would have fit better in that machine. And it was a good piece to bid with. Oh, I shouldn't have bid here. Uh, oh, I'm going to win this tie and I don't want to win this tie, you know. Uh, our very first game we played, uh, I, just recently we played two games back to back. And the first game was lopsided scores because people didn't know what was going on. The second game was very tight and very intense and much, much closer scores. Uh, it has a very in intriguing theme. Everyone likes the idea of putting robots together. And while I'm becoming less enamored with auction games in general, this is a good one because you know pretty much how much stuff is worth. There's eight cards you're going to be bidding on in a round and you only have six to bid with. And so you're not going to win everything. Uh, but you don't even want to, you don't want to win everything, but at the same time you want to win as much as you can, and you can watch the players who play cards before you, and if you really want a card, you can bid all six on it, and, you know, hopefully the other person doesn't bid six on that. But it evens out, it bounces out, it has a neat fun of building robots, and it's small, cheap, and fairly portable, has a good theme behind it. I, I was surprised by this one, I, I admit I wasn't expecting anything great, but it's a pretty good game. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.